So um, for pickles, it's the easiest preparation type to do, and uh, I always teach my students starting with this method um, because it allows us to focus all of our attention on cat getting data, filling out tags, and uh, taking tissue without also getting into all the complicated things of making skins and skeletons. Um, so this isn't a bad place to start with students. Um, and what's interesting is it will take you about three minutes to prepare the specimen, whereas it will take you about uh, three hours to get through teaching students how to fill out tags, take the data, and take the tissue specimen. Uh, but so um, once you've done all that, once you've got all your data, um, and you've added a tag. Now, um, unlike with skins, well, you're going to use special fluid tags um, for fluid specimens, the usual paper tags. The, the ideal tag for a skin is going to be a, a different kind of paper. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I've been brought alcohol. And um, not the kind that, that I might have wanted. but. Um, but uh, so there's fluid tags that are special that can go into alcohol or formalin and still hold the ink. Um, you do not want to use ethanol. Um, that will uh, run with the, um, with any of the fluids that you'd want to preserve in. Um, so you can use these pigment pens over here, um, or you can use pencil. Uh, we usually use pigment pens. Um, and the other thing is because. Um, Part of the curatorial process is usually that you assign a specimen a preparator's number because you just don't know what the outcome is going to be with that specimen. There's a whole world of preparation that has to travel through before it can be curated in the collection. But with a pickle, um, by the time you get to this point, you're just minutes away from being done. And so we assign our, our catalog number, the official final catalog number, um, as prior to pickling it, and we write that on the tag so that it goes in there, we are done. Um, it, yeah, and jump in with anything, guys, because I, you know, I actually don't have a lot of feel about what other people do. Um, so at this point, I typically would have, um, I, I don't do sexing. I might, I always take a, a pectoral sample, a tissue sample. Sometimes I do a liver sample, um, but that's usually uh, kind of all I do. Then I teach my students, I teach what I call the nine point injection. And nine point injection is definitely overkill for something like a, um, a goldfinch or a small passerine because uh, basically formalin is going to fix by permeating the tissue pretty quickly. Um, but it's just good to have a, a model in your head for where you would need to inject um, if you needed to get your fluid deeper into the specimen. The whole idea is to introduce the fluid so that um, preservation occurs before degradation. Um, typically, people, I think, are still preparing using formalin as their primary uh, fixative. There, you know, I've talked to some people because the, the problem with formalin is that it fixes DNA, so you lose the ability to extract certain histological things from formalin fixed specimens. <coughs> Um, and a formalin can be a nasty chemical to work with. Um, so so um, I'm, I'm curious, does anybody use ethanol as their primary preservative? If, yeah, if you were going to do different types of studies, et ethanol would be fine, but again, it's not a fixative because a formalin actually puts a protein coat across two cells and links those, and that's why it's hard to break. But et So ethanol leaves you vulnerable to future degradation, yes. but it, 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 uh, yeah, it has its own... And the key to both is preserving it and immediately. What we're often doing in camp, we have our tags ready, we have all the data ready to go before we even kill a bird. As soon as that bird is dead, we're injecting that within three or four mm -hmm, minutes. Mm -hmm. to, to maximally preserve. Because inside, what, especially if you've shot a bird, um, that's the other thing. Uh, degradation can begin uh, immediately. Likewise with roadkill. Oh, I guess the other thing I should say about this, this is just informative, is that um, people a lot of times say, oh, look at the skin is all shot up. It's not going to make a very good skin. The skeleton's all shot up. Let's, let's just make a pickle. Um, and this is the wrong idea. <laughs> do not do that. Because as a person who's used pickles, if you can't make a skin out of it, if you can't put a skeleton together, you're not going to be able to get anything skeletomuscularly out. It's going to be a big mess. You might as well. Actually, the best thing to do with those is to struggle and make a skin. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. And, and actually, you want the most pristine specimens possible for your pickles to make sure you've got good skeletal muscular, good neural, good anatomical inside the specimen. Okay, but the actual preparation, 
All that being said, um, is the nine point injection, which is the nine points are left, right, forelimb, left, right, hind limb, uh, left, right, pectoral, two in the gut, and then don't forget about the head. Um, so now here's where we'll actually do the demo. You're just gonna use a syringe and a needle. Um, always teach your students to poke away from themselves and not <laughs> towards themselves. Um, I, I've found that this is a great habit to develop is to hold on to the limb, put the torso of the bird away from you and push into the bird with the tip of your needle. Uh, slide it under the skin, um, add a nice slanting angle so you're not jabbing it through. And then you can inject a, a little bit of fluid. If I don't know, that's pretty subtle. Can, can, you, can, you can see that. Um, usually you can see a ballooning of the skin around where you uh, put the fluid. And you only need a couple, you know, a cc, a half a cc and a small pass ring is overkill. Um, in a bird this size, I'll give a couple of cc's of fluid um, in each injection. So now I'm going to do the other side. So this is two of nine. Again, just sliding it into the muscle, introducing that preservative um, into the thicker tissue parts. There's wing one, wing. Now I do, first of all, the inside of the wing here has got a nice bald patch with a lot of muscle. So this is a perfect place on the bird. And likewise, the inside of the upper thigh is a great place that's usually kind of bald so you can see what's going on. This is awfully dark, isn't it? Um, yeah. I wonder if we've got a light. Yeah, bring bring over. You can you can see something. Okay. I'm just gonna. That might help. Okay. There's not a whole lot to see. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm. No. Because remember the. The especially formal and fix, any kind of that molecular stuff that you might have wished you could have kept is going to be lost. So there's, the, there's a, no, you don't need to use a new needle. No, you're not doing molecular analyses with these kinds of specimens. You're doing histological or morphological. Now, now that's a good question. If you went for ethanol, maybe. But again, I mean, actually. You take a anyway. tissue sample prior. Yeah. 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 You're going to be using probably 70% of ethanol as well, so it's not as good as the stuff you would say tissue. I mean, if you're, if oh, you're, if you were doing ethanol. If you were right. preserving your ethanol, you probably wouldn't be using 100%. That's right. That's right, too. So the tissues wouldn't be as. Well, yeah. so we don't, we don't think of pickles. Um, okay, so I've done both legs. I'll do the pectoral region. This is a nestling, so um, not a whole lot of pectoral to get into. Also, if you've taken a tissue sample, the pectoral, the, the, one of your muscles is open and therefore is going to be uh, totally exposed to fluid anyways. Um, then I usually do one injection high in the gut, like in the heart-lung area, one low in the gut to the, um, you know, the um, intestinal area. Oops, and if you hit the stomach, nothing's gonna happen, okay? Um, and then the last one is in the, head, the region of the head. And um, it's hard to put uh, um, a needle in between the skin and the skull. I usually get right behind the jaw, there's a little bit of muscle there, and you can just introduce a little fluid there. Hopefully you saw that kind of balloon up like that. Um, <laughs> yikes. You should always wear goggles as well, because the foreline can like, yeah. the soul, but sometimes the yeah. Yep. <laughs> and that's kind of it. Um, your visit, that is specimen preparation. Um, then I usually try and put it in sort of the fetal position before you put it in so it doesn't have legs and stuff sticking out to um, knock into other uh, specimens. And then you can just immerse it in the whole jar of formalin, in this case, ethanol. <coughs> I'm saying as well, in the fetal, um, you just chuck dry birds into the bed that they get full. Oh, they float. So you need, to, you need to wash them with some soap That's right. detergent so they'll actually sink. Otherwise, if they're, if you've got a lot of birds in there, they'll be floating and they can, they can decay. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Just to reiterate on that, um, a nice dry specimen 
um, is good that those feathers will hold a lot of air. And you have to introduce not just water, but a tiny little film of soap in there so that the water can saturate so that it does not sit on top. That's, that's an excellent point. I'm going to I always rinse off the soap as much as I can and use it very sparingly. It's going to saturate the feathers. So